So when I was in Rome in uh, seminary years ago, I entered in the year 2000, there were uh, a range of characters from all around the world and they brought with them all of their backgrounds and all of their uh, cultures and languages and very interesting. And a guy who happened to be my roommate quite often um, shall remain nameless because I'm about to tell a story about him, but uh, he was from a country uh, and from a city in that country uh, where there uh, may have been a lot of, well, gangs and that sort of thing. So he grew up kind of on the streets and was uh, quite a good street fighter. He showed me a couple of moves. Uh, I'll show you later. Um, so uh, it was, uh, he, had a, he had a very different background to me. <laughs> uh, so, and one thing which, is, which became quite apparent during our formation was uh, his need for a dad, right? Uh, his, his parents weren't married, so his dad was in and out of his life and he, he longed for his dad's presence. He longed for his dad to be there. He longed for this kind of dependable, solid figure in his life. You know, someone whose attention, I suppose, he didn't have to win. Someone's attention he had, you know. So, and interestingly, this can often happen here in Holy Family as well, but also in, I suppose, in any place where there's a group of people living together. Um, this, this young man would have seen our founder, right? Uh, so Father Paul, the founder of my community, as a father figure. Now, there are pros and cons to that, because you'll generally project your experience of fatherhood on whoever this father figure is. So while on one hand he really wanted Father Paul's attention and really wanted his approval, deep down he felt, ultimately, you're going to leave me. So I want your attention, but I don't really trust you at the same time. So I, kind of, I want you to recognize what I do and affirm it, but at the same time, I don't really want to let you in because you're going to leave me. Right? And... They had, a, they had a conversation, which this, this seminarian recounted to me afterwards. Um, they had a conversation where Father Paul had to say very, very clearly, I am not like your father. I am not like your father. I'm a, I'm, I, I, I'm a father to you here in the community, absolutely. But I will not leave you. I will not leave you. I'm not like your father. And he didn't mean it to be you know, derogatory towards uh, the guy's dad. But... He wants to just, just, just stop projecting onto me your experience of fatherhood. Because that's, that's not the way it's going to be. That's not the truth. I will not leave you. Now, he's still in the community, he became a priest, and, and he's happy out. That was, that was what year is it? This 20, 20 something, 20 years ago. So, and he hasn't left him yet. So, I think he's on the right track. So, this can happen to us. I think it happens to us more than we might realize. When it comes to thinking of God as Father, we project onto him our experience of fatherhood. Understandably, we've only had one. So when you think Father, you think Father. I've only had one Father, so when I think God the Father, I think of I, that idea of fatherhood, and I project it up to God. It, it makes perfect sense. The danger, of course, is uh, if, well, our fathers tended to be human, and humans tend to be flawed. So we're projecting then a flawed image of God, a flawed image of fatherhood onto God. And that can have very, very serious implications for our prayer life and for our spiritual life. Because generally speaking, we do want a father's love. We do want a father's attention. But did we have to do something to get it in our family? Did we have to, like, you know, if there were 17 kids and I was one of them, like, you know, did I have to go, daddy, 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 daddy? <laughs> to get his attention, you know? Uh, or did I, have, did I feel I had to perform at sports or exams and say, Daddy, I got a gold star in my English? Uh, you know, did, did, I, did I feel in some way I had to win his attention to get it? Or was he so busy with work that maybe there was, just, there was very little time left over for you and he'd come back wrecked from his day doing whatever and, and he'd say, yeah, 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 we'll talk, we'll talk tomorrow, but tomorrow never came. You know, so all sorts of things can happen in, in a family where we find ourselves longing for the love of a father and uh, maybe dad coming up short. And so then we think about God and we think, yeah, that's nice. He's there. Oh, he's, ah, he's there. God's there. I believe, I believe God exists in the same way that I believe my, my father exists. He was there. He was there. Just didn't have much interest in me. Didn't know me. And while he knew I existed as well, I'm not sure if 
I was anywhere near his top 400 priority. I was in there, I was there somewhere, but like, well, amongst many other things, like football and cars and whatever. You know, this could, could be our experience. So generally speaking, people don't have a, a problem believing God exists. Because the existence, well, existence of God is very easy. Okay, he exists, fine. But the, the, the issue becomes when we have to step into this idea of, of this reality of God not just existing, but wanting a relationship with us and the kind of relationship that you have between father and son, father and daughter. That's a whole other league than God just exists. It's a whole other reality. It's a completely different relationship. So we hear in the end of our reading today, a scripture says, you are my son, today I have become your father. This is the Old Testament, this is from a psalm, which they, they repeat then in the New Testament. So already back then, God is trying to communicate, I want a father-son relationship, a father-daughter relationship with you. It's not enough just to believe I exist and then kind of follow my commands and ordinances, important and all as they are. I want a loving relationship with you. Today I have become your father. It's, it's something that, unfortunate, fortunately, unfortunately, I, I'm rediscovering myself. I mean, I should know this by now. I really should. <laughs> but I think we can always go deeper in our relationship, in our, in our discovery of God as father. We can always go deeper. Because no matter how good our father was, God is infinitely more. So even if, I, even if we had a great experience of fatherhood, God the Father is, is, is so much better than that even. He's the Father who will never leave us, the Father who's, whose gaze is always upon us. And then in our gospel today, it, it, it's such, a, it's from John 14, it's such a tender gospel. You can, you can imagine like when you're beat up from, from the world and from th these days, trying to uh, you know, remain on the straight and narrow, and I can, I can only imagine what it's like for parents with young kids and the last year has been just such a mess uh, with going to school, not going to school, and kids at home kind of half on school, half uh, on the computer, half, half on Amazon, and it's all kind of happening at the same time, and no homework, loads of homework, and no homework being checked, and teachers then going, like, this person is, is apparently on my, in my classroom but isn't actually physically there. Just crazy stuff. And then trying to protect your kids from the absolute mess of stuff that's out there morally. It's, it's just so hard. It's got to be so hard to be a parent of young kids today. And so then we listen to Jesus' words, you know, in this kind of storm of, of darkness and confusion and fear. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If not, I should have told you. Now this is, this is kind of my favorite bit, just because, just picture this, like have a mental image in your head as we read this. I'm going now to prepare a place for you. <laughs> you know, fluffing up the pillows, fluffing out the owl duvet, Hoover in the floor, nice little towel rolled up at the end of the bed, freshen the wind, you know, open the windows, freshen the room a little, you know what I mean, a bit of free breeze, do you know what I mean, adjust a little pamphlet on the desk, you know, welcome to heaven. <laughs> Emergency exits down the corridor to the left. Great. Bar soap. Okay. Good. Next. <laughs> just, maybe it's just my hyper overactive imagination. Jesus said it, right? I'm going to prepare a place for you in the rooms in my father's house. That's what he said. So that's what I see, sorry. Sorry if I'm so literal. But I just, uh, Jesus is preparing a place for us in heaven. That's just class, don't quote me on that, it's really untheological. Um, <laughs> but I am going to prepare a place for you. And after I've gone and prepared you a place, so he says it again in case we weren't listening the first time. After I've gone and prepared a place for you, I shall return and take you with me. So that where I am, you may be too. 
That's just such a consoling gospel. Do you know, with all of the, the, the mess and the fear and, and everything going on, that this promise is made to us by the Lord. And so he, 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 does, he does the hard work. Now, maybe if we delve a little deeper into it, the Lord preparing a place for us, his preparation for us really is, is, is the Last Supper and dying on the cross. That's how he prepares the place for us. That's how he opens the gates of heaven and makes it possible for us. But it's, it's a, such a beautiful and consoling image. So he wants us to be where he is. He wants us to be with the Father. He wants us to hear these words from Scripture, from the Psalm, from today's reading. You are my son. You are my daughter. Today I have become your father. And so we ask that. In this time of Easter, this time of joy and celebration and redemption and peace and light, that we will discover or rediscover God as our Father. Discover his loving plan for us. Discover the heart of the good news. Amen.